Yes. So, so, so how old are you now? I'll be 89 next month. 89 next month. So you've actually been with Parramatta since 1960, so that's a, a fair swag of your life. Yes. You're still, you're still committed to it, Frank. So what's what's your best memories and you know, or fondest memories and, and why do you do it? Oh, well, I, I just got, got involved with rugby at an early stage and uh, I, I, I thought Gordon was a great club when I went there. W West was a good club. Gordon was a much more professional club. When I came to Parramatta, I could see we were on the upward upward trend there with the establishment of the juniors and my association with the juniors I could see the, the flow of players going up to the senior club and uh, you could see the, the benefits of that for early 70s they started to show out and uh, 74, 75 from there onward we we were getting the full benefit of that, that junior intake and I, I, I think we, we've still got a big future, we've got to get back to that grassroots structure but in the, the past three years it's coming back and I'm very hopeful that uh, it'll continue Okay, I'm just sort of moving moving on. Just some you know, quick questions. Uh, the junior rugby team, so that's just uh, Port Street, didn't, there's no junior rugby at all? Well, I didn't know of any junior rugby. <laughs> so we're very little. So you see your football teams, Wes and Gordon? Yes, so I, I no played. Rep, no I, rep footy? I played, I played subbies when I was 14. So <laughs> they were all. That, that was 1940. Nearly everyone else in the team was in the in the forces, or were just about to go into the forces. I, I was by far the youngest there. We, we used to uh, get your team by whoever was on leave that weekend, sort of thing. And then, of course, it just melted away during the war. But coming back in '46, I, I went. Went to West and uh, I, I I just like rugby. I, I I never was involved in rugby league uh, except for one uh, my brother got involved with uh, with some uh, Newtown rugby at league personal there. And, the first year before I got out of the Navy, actually, I was still in the Navy, 1946, and he got me to go down to to Henson Park there to a couple of training sessions with the league. But I I, I wasn't impressed. They, they all seemed to look at you. Who's this coming in? <laughs> Is he going to take any money away from us? Sort of thing. Yeah. It just wasn't welcome there, yeah. and uh, I also heard uh, Bumper Farrell singing Mother McCree in the shower, and that put me on. <laughs> <laughs> so I went up the west and played rugby up there, and I never, never regretted it. I've been involved in the administration here at, at Parramatta, and also I was on the, well, I was the rep. Parramatta representative at, at New South Wales and Sydney Rugby Union and the grades committees and all that over there and I was on the judiciary for 12 years. But that was a enlightening period on the judiciary. So you, you see many Parramatta players down there? Yes, and they, they were all villains according to... <laughs> I, I had an awful job <laughs> when a Parramatta player came up convincing that he wasn't a place. Of that. And the uh, life membership in 87? Yes, that was a, a, a great honour. 
treasured that one. At uh, 1987, was it? Yeah, I think it was. From 1991, when we started to play Granville Park, there was no one to look after the ground. So I, having nothing to do, volunteered. I've been stuck with it ever since. Marking it out. I, <laughs> well, I don't know how you do that. Marking, knowing, <laughs> watering. You know, but you know that. Um, <coughs> well, to me, it's it's been an interest. That's uh, the main thing. I, I don't mind. That was a a way of keeping a little bit of fitness. That's physical work, and uh, well. I was an insurance broker all my life. <laughs> it was a different, uh, never shiny but different thing. But uh, I got a lot of, an awful lot of help from Graham Logan. You now Graham used to play fifth grade with us, and uh, he was now doing the big job at the Olympic Stadium at Hanbush. So he knows his stuff, and he used to tell us what to do, when to do it, and how to do it, and that. Uh, we used to borrow his equipment. <laughs> we didn't have a mower at the time, we couldn't afford one. But I uh, used to go over there and get the mower, which was an attachment behind the tractor. I used to drive it over to Granville, do the mowing and drive it back to the Paramount Stadium. We did this for a couple of years. And uh, found out later that it was never registered. <laughs> <laughs> It's like you didn't have an accident or a short spot. But just, 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 yeah. It had plates on it, had, had registration plates on it. But yeah. they, they, never did they forgot through. to renew, <laughs> renew the, the license for a couple of years. But, no, Graham was a great help. He's, he used to come over and play fifth grade and criticise the ground. Yeah. Now on Thursday you play with ex-rugby mates. I've yeah. I heard you're associated with Tiger Woods. <laughs> that you'd like to um, the drop ball, a bit contentious. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Never given it a nudge or anything like that? No. No, no, no not really. No, um, I mean, no but there's a, a group of us there, all with Parramatta Association. And Alan Manette has played the, the greatest number of games for Parramatta. He's uh, one of the players there. Murray Sutton that's been associated with the club for many years. John Evans was on the board for, for years. Bruce Collette coaching and a uh, general handyman. He did most of the iron work on the gates and then down at Granville Park. And he was uh, uh, Joe Scott who never had any close association with the club before the but now is the Tower of Strength helping out with the, the ground down at Granville. Running the gate. He's yeah. my right, right hand man down there <laughs> and also doing the gate, getting, getting record contributions from the patrons of the gate on Saturdays. You stay so, well with that for certain. So Joe has been a great discovery to the club and a great help. Maybe stays with us. Well, all of us. I guess now, uh, Frank is, uh, I guess, on behalf of the club, and we're sitting here in uh, Mary Ann's RSL Club, which is a major sponsor of, of uh, Paramount of Rugby, and we, we thank them for you know, being our lifeblood. Um, where, do you, where do you see us going in the future? Well, just uh, as far as Mary Ann's RSL is concerned, it's uh, a repeat performance as far as I'm concerned. I was first associated with Maryland's Juniors and uh, I, I'd say the whole strength of Maryland's Juniors were members of Maryland's RSL. They, I think Eric Tweedale recruited a few from the RSL and the, it was self uh, Self-producing from there, though, all all the officials and office bearers and volunteers at Maryland's Juniors were 
RSL personnel sales. So the wheels it's, virtually turned full circle. It's, it's great to see them involved again there. We, we appreciate that too. I guess you on behalf of the club, Frank, and, and, and to uh, Belle, your, your wife and family, we do thank you for your time and your effort that you, you, know, you put into us. Mm. How many years would you say this thing? I'm just trying, I'm just trying to work that out. Is that 48? Uh, something like that. Uh, for, for 40, well, 43, isn't it? Uh, 70? Yeah, 60, yeah 40, 43. 43 years? Yeah. And you've been, like I said, you've gone through the highs and lows, and we thank you and appreciate all you do, and you will continue to do. Well, I have, sounds. As long as I'm able to. You've done well, my friend. Thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Peter. <Peter. laughs>